Church. The following sermon was presented by its pastor, Reverend William P. Gale, in Glendale, California, on the 13th day of September in 1970. The title of this sermon is Born Again. We must recognize that there are many conditions about us today which make us unhappy, which disturb us, but we must also recognize that we are Jacob's children and we are in the time of Jacob's trouble. Usually when the name Jacob is mentioned, the Jacob of the Bible, the average Christian immediately grinds some gears up here and thinks Jew. Now let us clarify this matter before we begin. Jacob, Abraham, the seed or descendants of Abraham, are the descendants of Adam and Eve of the Bible. None are Jews. The biggest lie that has been told in Christianity is that those Israelites of the Old Testament were Jews. The Jews know that's false. I have a rabbi's manual published by the Jewish Synagogue Council of New York. I have it in the car because I'm going to take it with me. I always do. In that, they called the Bible in the hands of its creators, published by Jews, for Jews. It states very clearly that Jesus Christ is not a Jew but a Greco-Roman. Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, is not of Jewish seed. And the Anglo-Saxons are the Israelites. And they know it. And they say it in their book. Who has been deceived? Who has been persecuted? Lo, these many thousands of years. Who was crucified on the cross? Not a Jew. You see, that's another of the big lies they have told Christians throughout the ages. They have told Christians that Jesus Christ is a Jew. Now let's see what the book says. Throughout the Bible, we're, we have a subject here this morning, born again, so we're not going to go deeply into these other areas, but just enough for a background so we can understand what we're talking about here today. In order to understand the scriptures, we must understand that it is a book, and it says it, I'm not saying it, the first verse of the chapter, fifth chapter of Genesis makes it clear that the Bible is a book of the race of Adam. Now the word generation is there in English, but the word was race in Greek. The Bible is a book of the race of Adam. Now the Catholic version of the Bible, the Douay version, 1950 series and prior, in the book of Wisdom, or rather in the book of Canticles first, refers to Jesus Christ. And it says it in these words. He is white, ruddy, or reddish complexion, and chosen out of thousands. In that same way, or Catholic version of the Bible, referring to Jesus Christ in the book of wisdom, it says he is of the race of Adam. In those very words. He is white and ruddy, reddish complexion. There is no one what we, but what we call the white or the Caucasian, or the Adamic race, which is the race of Adam and Eve, which are ready or reddish, ready or reddish complexion. That's what we call the white race. Now there might be someone who say this is a racist message. You bet it is. This Bible is a racist book. This Bible is about the race of the sons and daughters of God. It talks about the sons and daughters of God throughout. And it also talks about another bunch of children, the children of the devil. In the third chapter of Genesis, right in the early times of the Bible, God said to Adam and Eve, he said he was going to put enmity between the seed of Adam or the seed of God and the seed of the serpent or the devil. And Jesus Christ, in, in the parable of the wheat and the tares, identified the tares as the children of the devil. In John 8, Jesus Christ identified the Jews as those children of the devil. Then how could Jesus Christ be a child of the devil? No, you see, the clergy haven't gone into the book. Everything I say is there. And Eve was seduced by Satan, and Cain was the progeny of Satan. Says so in the Bible. First John, Cain was of that wicked one. Parable of the wheat and the tares, Jesus identified the wicked one as the devil. And in John 8, he identified the Jews as the children of the devil, literally, physically. What's so surprising that God has children in the earth, the devil has them too. Nothing surprising about that. 
And these children of the devil have claimed your inheritance from the day they came into the earth, and they were on the earth before your race ever came here. The Bible tells about the created races in the second chapter of Genesis. Yes, the clergy haven't seen that, though, but it's there. Races of people that God created. Archaeology proves that there were races on this earth a million seven hundred and fifty thousand years ago. That's what Genesis is all about. But when God put his family on the earth, Adam and Eve, you'll notice it was after the creation. After God rested the seventh day. After the age of the creation. Then the Bible brings in Adam and Eve, and it doesn't say they were created. It says they were formed of the dust. Well, the translators did a good messy, messy job on that phrase, too. They were formed into a flesh body in the terrestrial plains, is what the Hebrew text says. God put Adam and Eve, his family here in the earth, the first of his family, his children, in the flesh body, after all of the creation and after all the other races that he created were created. So we get that clear. Then the Bible is a story of that race of Adam and Eve. And the first thing God told Eve was to not partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, silly clergymen have told Christians that Eve ate an apple off a tree. You've been told that Eve ate an apple off a tree. Well, the Bible doesn't say that at all. The silly clergymen say it. The ones who have been brainwashed by some Jew in a seminary. The tree of knowledge is symbolic language, and there is a tree with knowledge. It's the family and the racial tree. In simple English today, translated properly, God said, don't mix this holy seed, this race of God, with the races that I created and are on the earth today. That was the first violation of divine law when Satan seduced Eve and Bar Cain, and Cain was what we would call the first white Jew on the face of the earth. There were black Jews, Zulu, Zuzu Jews of the Asiatic Jew line way back before Adam and Eve or your race were ever on the earth. Satan was here then. If you don't believe it, read the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. Start with chapter 7. There was a war in the heavens. Satan, that devil, was cast out of the heavens to the planet Earth. Chapter 12 of Revelation, verse 7 through 17, should be read by everybody because it said all of the offspring of Satan, the descendants or seed of Satan, would be against your race and against those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And Satan's kids, the Jews, are against Jesus Christ and your race. They're out the mongrelized your race. They're behind all the integration programs throughout the world and in your country today. And Jesus said they hated him and they hate you. Now, who's right when somebody comes along and says, I know a good Jew? Who's right, that person or Jesus Christ, who said they hated him and hate you? They are the hate mongers. They hate your God and they hate your government. They hate your Constitution of the United States and your government because they know it's a Christian government. And they are communists. You can't study communism anywhere without finding the children of Satan behind it because it's Satan's government. Yes, but here is a race on the earth that was brought here, and we are here for a purpose. In spite of all the gobbledygook and nonsense the theologians have put in the minds of Christians, in spite of all the doctrines of men that have been put in the minds of clergy in these seminaries that have been infiltrated for years and years in this country by Antichrist Jews who have gone in kidding them, saying that they are God's chosen people and that they know the book and they don't even use the Bible. They use the Talmud for their false religion called Judaism. In the days of Christ, called the tradition of the elders. And Jesus said to them, ye and your traditions make the word of God or the Bible of no effect. One of them is right and the other is wrong. If the Jews are right, the Bible's all wrong. If the Jews are right, Jesus Christ is all wrong. Take your choice. If you're not with me, you're against me. There is no middle of the road with your God. All oh, these people today say, join this organization, but don't mention the name of Jesus Christ. You would be bringing religion into politics or government. Isn't it about time? The United States of America, according to the Supreme Court of the United States in 1892 on the 29th of February, declared the United States a Christian nation. With all the mass and volume of evidence before the court, they had to declare it a Christian nation. This nation was founded by Christians, for Christians, and they were white race. They were white race because Christianity is the religion of the white race. No other race on the earth has the Christian faith unless the white man brought it to them. So what does this have to do with these, these 
the doctrines of men the clergy have taught in the churches. Doctrines of men, what did the Bible say the bread is? Oh, Jesus gave bread, yes. It tells you the bread is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. When you have bread, you're getting the doctrine of Jesus Christ, not the doctrine of the devil. What is this born again bet? How many Christians have you heard ask the question, have you been born again? How many Christians have been given the doctrine of men on this salvation question? They preach, preach and say they must preach salvation. If you don't preach salvation, they say we won't come to your church. I tell them, stay out then, because we don't preach salvation in that sense. We do in another way, but not in the way they want it. They want this personal salvation deal. Well, they can come up and grind some gear and accept Jesus Christ. They don't know what they accept him as. And that gives them an inner feeling that they say then they're saved. This Bible says your God, the God of Israel, and you're Israel, Jesus Christ came and saved Israel. If God saved Israel, you've been saved. And if I stand here and tell you you have to come here to get saved, I'm telling you that Jesus Christ failed. Now, who am I to say that Jesus Christ failed? Wouldn't that be something and isn't it something for a clergyman to say that God failed? His God isn't very much of a God if he failed. Our God never fails. Our God doesn't have to do anything second time. He doesn't make any mistakes. He knows what he's doing from the beginning to the end. Jesus said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I know everything from the beginning to the end. Everything you think I put there. You can't do anything without Jesus Christ. He said so. You can't do anything without me. I'm God. So these people look for salvation when they've had it already. Just like a lot of people spend a lot of money with books teaching the Constitution and the Christian background of the Constitution, and they limit their efforts to that, and that's 30 years too late. Your Constitution is gone. Your government is not functioning under the Constitution of the United States today. Your officials who you have elected to uphold, defend, and preserve that Constitution are destroying it right in front of your face. So it's 30 years too late. Why wouldn't they contribute a little to the work of their God? No, I know why. Because they're what I call safety zone patriots. They're afraid of the Jews. Just as Jesus said with his 120 disciples, they were up in a room, they were afraid to speak for fear of the Jews. Why must Christians be afraid of the Jews? Six million of them from Eastern Europe came over here on ships that took our troops to Europe. They were communists there and they're communists here. They weren't burning gas ovens. They're here in the United States and I can prove it. And if anybody wants to know where the proof is, go into the Pentagon on the fifth floor, the transportation section, and get the microfilm of the ship manifest that came back from Europe with us, that taking our troops to Europe from 1939 to 46. You will find the names of six men. All changing their names to Irish names, Polish names, Hungarian names, phony documents, phony papers, and they call themselves refugees. They're not refugees, they're refugees. <laughs> no wonder we have a communist problem in America. And do you know your God told you that would happen right in the Bible? Jesus Christ said your enemy will be right in your own household. People worrying about communism in Moscow, communism in Vietnam, when you've got a block of communists in the State Department in Washington, D.C. Just like your God said, your enemies in your own house. And if anybody thinks I can't prove that, call me on that one, too. I'll give you the names and where they came from. General Willoughby, General MacArthur's G2 had it documented that 46 known communists went into the State Department who were over in Asia and Japan and China. Read his book on it. The Thorgy spy ring. I happened to be there in General MacArthur's staff, and I know them. In fact, one of them, the main one, killed himself in the room next to me in the Daidi Hotel. Yes, these communists have infiltrated your government for a long time. What does this have to do with being born again? It has a lot to do with it. Now, let's get down to this born again bit. You've been asked, were you born again? Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you understand the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you know you were born again when you were born into this body here on the earth. That's what we're going to show you in Scripture. That's what happened. You don't get born again by grinding some gear. How did you get here? How did I get in this body? I was born into it. Everybody was here. 
Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. <clears throat> there was a man of the Pharisees, the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Now it says in this King James Version, the ruler of the Jews. That's a mistranslation. You look your Hebrew up, it said a ruler of the Judeans. Nicodemus was an Israelite. No Jew is an Israelite. Let's clear that up in your mind right now. Jesus Christ said, I come not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the whole house of Israel. And he turned to the Jews and said, you're not my sheep, as I said unto you. Well, that's eighth grade algebra. If A equals B, if C is equal to A, it's unequal to B. If Jesus Christ is sheep of the house of Israel, the Jews are not his sheep, they're not the house of Israel. No, they're just who he said he was, they're the children of faith. And the house of Israel are the servants of God. The house of Israel are the children, the offspring, the issue of God. Now, Nicodemus was an Israelite. He came, he came to Jesus by night. You know, he stood up with Jesus in the days of the trial, and he was a, a learned lawyer of Israel. He didn't even deny Jesus Christ like Peter did. He stood up and fought for him. Right against the Jews. It says to you Jews, all right, do anything you want to me, but he's right. The same, he came to Jesus by night. He had to go to him at night. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do the miracles that you do except God be with him. Yes, Nicodemus was suspicious. Here Lazarus had been dead four days. And Jesus said, rise. And Lazarus came back to life. Who could do anything like that? The woman had a little boy, a few years old, who had died. He wasn't breathing. They had the doctors there, and she called upon Jesus, and Jesus said, Your lad sleep. And instantly, the baby was alive. Who could do that but the Almighty God? All these things Jesus did, he was in the treasury building, and the Jews were throwing stones at him, and he walked right through the wall and was out in the court. Nothing could happen to him. <clears throat> yes, Nicodemus was suspicious here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, what's this born again got to do with other than the kingdom of God? All right, Nicodemus then said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? In other words, can he be born the second time? <clears throat> Jesus said, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What's being born of the water and the Spirit? That's being born into the race of God. The Spirit. The Spirit is nothing but what we call the Holy Seed or the Holy Ghost. You don't see it, but it's in a race of people. The Holy Trinity is simple in that respect. The Holy Trinity, the Father, the Seed, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost are one. Your body, soul, and spirit, your mind is your soul, your body is terrestrial and your mind is terrestrial, but you have a spirit which is celestial in you because you're children of God. That spirit is incorruptible, we'll show you later. All right, unless you be born with that spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom of God or the government of God. The only people qualified to rule and administer God's government anywhere on this earth are God's people. All right. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You're spirit because you're born of the Spirit. And those other people who are created by God are born of the flesh. And they have no spirit. They have flesh. They're the walking dead. You want to know what a black is rightfully by Scripture? There's a word for it in Hebrew. And it means the walking dead. It's zombie. Zombie means the walking dead. They have no spirit and no life. Now the Mormon church has known this for years. They will not let a black be a priest in the Mormon church because that spirit isn't there and they know it. All right. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. In other words, don't be surprised about this. The wind blows where it lifts. You hear the sound of it. But you cannot tell where, from where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You can't see that Spirit. It's invisible. But you can see the body.
And you can see the mind if you take an x-ray or an operation. That spirit is celestial, but it's in you. <clears throat> Nicodemus answered, and he said, how can these things be? You see, these things that sound so strange to somebody who doesn't understand the power of God, the omnipotency of God. Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a master of Israel? Now, you see, Jesus said, Are you a master of Israel and you do not know these things? Nicodemus studied in the mystery schools of your race in Egypt with a high priest of your race, known as the Order of the Masanos, who had the symbols that you see here above you, the compass and the square. They were known as the Bilirates, the high priests of your race, Order of the Masanos, the origin of masonry in Egypt were the priests of your race. And, Nic and Nicodemus was one. And Nicodemus had been there and studied. And Jesus said, I say to you, we speak that what we know and testify what we have seen, but you receive not our witness. I have told you earthly things and you believe not. Now how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly or spiritual things? The average people want to know about these things, getting saved and being born again, and they don't even know why they're here or who they are. They don't understand the earthly things, yet they want to talk about the heavenly things. It was the same day, same way in the days of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus says, and no man has extended up to heaven. All right, heaven. Heaven and hell, you've heard of them. What is heaven? It's an English word. If you just think celestial planes, celestial versus terrestrial, when you read the word heaven, you'll get a better picture of it. No man can go back to the celestial planes, but he that came down from heaven. Even the seed of Adam, which is in heaven. Oh, you have some relatives in heaven yet. But get that. No one can go to heaven but those who came out of it. Your race came from there, and Jesus Christ just said so. Your race existed in the celestial plane before you were born into this body here on the earth, but you just don't remember it. You don't remember a lot of things that you did right here on the earth in this body that you're in. But the fact that you don't remember it doesn't mean you weren't here, does it? The fact that you don't remember your existence with your Father in the heaven before you came to this earth doesn't mean you weren't there either, does it? Because you were, and I'm going to show you where Jesus Christ said you were. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the seed of Adam be lifted up to the Son of Man here. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, all God's children will believe in him in time. Oh, so they say get saved. They say born again. They use all these terms. And they don't even understand what they mean. And the clergy I'm talking about. Now, why would Moses be referred to in the New Testament? The Jews don't have anything to do with the New Testament. I'm going to give you a little hint here. You look in your New Testament for Israel. You'll find the New Testament is loaded to Israel. It's written to Israel. So if you're not Israelite, throw the book away. There's nothing in it for you. All right, now let's turn to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now get that clearly. This Bible is put together so you have to search. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Who did he bear witness of? Who did John the Baptist bear witness of? Jesus Christ, of course, the light. Christ is light in Greek. Now, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. You see, when John the Baptist heard that Jesus had come, John sent his disciples down to Jesus to find out if that's the one, if that's the God of Israel, who is to come in the flesh. And Jesus just sent him back and said, just tell John what you've seen and what you've heard. Because Jesus knew that John knew his Old Testament. Jesus knew that John knew that Isaiah had testified of the things and witness of what Jesus Christ or the God of Israel would do when he came into the earth in a flesh body. Jesus knew that John the Baptist knew that, so he just told him, go back and tell John what you've seen and heard. John will know it's me. Oh, yes, that was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. Yes, you've got to come into this stinking, dirty world. It's run by Satan. You don't like it. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. No, the world doesn't know your God. The world ought to Satan. 
He came now, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Yes, those, this, the translators have really messed this up. But the sons of God were going to believe and know him. Now, what, what about these sons of God, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God? Born of God. Born children of God, your father. And the word was made flesh. Now it says the word was God, didn't it, in the very first verse. And the word, or God, was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. And who did they witness and see? The word, Jesus Christ. Now, born of God, born of God, children of God, the whole Bible is full of the children of God. Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 13. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Didn't you just sing Hallelujah? How many Christians have been told by the clergy that they're singing Hail Yah? Hallelujah, hail Yah. Yah was the ancient Hebrew name of what we call God. It was pronounced Yahweh. Well, we're lazy and they shortened it to Yah. Greek translate the name Yahweh, the name of what we call God, the creator of the universe. They translate it to the name Yahzus. And everywhere Yahzus appeared in the Greek, when it was translated to English, it's Jesus. Yahweh, Yahzus, Jesus, the same name, the God of Israel. Yes, salvation and glory and honor and power unto Yahweh our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. That's talking about the devil. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. The four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah, Hail Yah. If you want to take your Muslims over in the Middle East and watch them turn to the east, watch them get down thrown, raise their hands, and say, Ah, Yah, Ah, Yah, Ah, Yah. Oh, silly English people say Allah. No. Double L is Spanish and it's Aya. And that's what they say. They're worshiping Jesus when they say Aya, because that's his name. Yes. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for Yahweh God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. That's Jesus Christ coming again, because he is the Lamb of God. Married with his people, you Israelites. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is a righteous of saints. It sounds like a big clan meeting is going to come about, doesn't it? <laughs> white linen and robes. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said to me, He that you do it not, I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You can nearly prophesy if you want to understand this book, because it's a history of what happened, and it's in cycles, and your history repeats itself. Yes, and I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. What's this peace then? Peace, peace, they're all saying. Oh, the President of the United States gets on the television, he's looking for peace, world peace. He better read this book, or he better get a new preacher. He better throw Billy Graham back into Hawaii, or into the garbage can, for producing a picture made by Jews to further... Confused Christians right now, they're spending $250,000, Billy Graham is, to put out a picture proving that the Jews are the Israelites of the Bible and Christ is a Jew and all that garbage. Yes, 
the one that gets them to come up to the pulpit and get saved and get born again and all that stuff. The one that said Jesus is a nigger. <laughs> Billy Graham said it. Yes, he did. It was published in the Los Angeles Times. Well, he doesn't believe the Catholic Bible then, does he? He doesn't believe this Bible either, because this Bible says the same thing that the Catholic Bible says. Jesus Christ is white and ruddy into the race of Adam, and the race of Adam is white then. It doesn't make Jesus black. It makes him white. All right, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and no man has no wonder there's going to be a war. How would some of these preachers, in fact, we had one one time, who came to one of our groups, group of them came. I'll tell you, I don't know whether they were all Baptists or not, but they became very angry when we came upon the race question. And they said we were wrong. The blacks were our brothers. And one of our preachers looked at one of them and said, well, that's all right, you look half nigger to me. And did he get mad? <laughs> oh, he got mad. It was almost a fist fight. Don't you say that about me. My ancestors started in Massachusetts and were on the Mayflower, and he was angry. And the flower preacher got it in my back. I said, what's the matter? What are you mad about? You're the one that said you're all the same. You're the one that said it. But I'm the hypocrite. All integration. Bust them in and bust them in. But just put one in a house next to them. I'll watch them run. Oh, didn't Jesus say you hypocrites? You speak it, but you don't do it. Well, there's going to be a war because his eyes were as a flame of fire and your eyes are going to get the same way. The wrath is going to rise in your countenance when you see what these Jews are doing in your country, tearing your constitutional republic apart, backing all of this communism, the integration of the races, and mixing the races, that's against the law of your God. Why, you're going to tear them apart. I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he sat upon him was called faithful and true and righteousness. He makes war. His eyes were as flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. For the Word of God, it says, is his name. And who's the Word? The Bible tells you Jesus Christ is the Word. The Word of God. And the Word is God. Who was manifested here on the earth in the flesh, it says. Now let's turn to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Yes, every book of this New Testament is written that Paul writes it to the saints. You go back in the Psalms, and the Psalm says that the saints are the people of Israel. The saints are Israelites, and every book of the New Testament is written to the saints. Every book of the New Testament is written to the Israelites. Not Jews, Israelites, who you are. Known by a new name, Christ's sons are Christians. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as... and in the defense of confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and the praise of God. All right. Now, Love. Clergy tell you, love. They say the Bible says you love each other. Yes. Righteousness. But the first commandment Jesus Christ gave to his children on the earth, to love Yahweh thy God, or Jesus, with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. That is the first and great commandment for Christians. Tell me how you can do it and love the devil too. Tell me how you can love Jesus Christ in righteousness and love evil at the same time. You can't do it. There's no place in the Bible that says to do it. Now we're going to preach a little hate. Hate the devil. Hate the enemies of your God with a vengeance, it says in this book. How can you obey the first commandment? Unless you do. Get it clear and get all guilt complex out of your mind that it's wrong to hate. It depends upon what you hate. If you hate the evil, that's good. If you hate the devil, then you love Jesus Christ. 
If you're not with me, you're against me. There is no middle of the road with Jesus Christ. Oh, like I said, these organizations want to bring a Jew in so they don't hurt the feelings of the Jew. And they bring a devil in who belongs to the Anti-Defamation League, immediately runs down and conspires and gives the names and operates from the inside to tear the Christian organization apart. Because why? They don't believe Jesus Christ. They want to be popular. I don't want to be popular. I want to be right. I'd rather lose in a cause that's right than win in one that's wrong. And it's about time some of the leadership of this land took that philosophy. Because that's the philosophy and the doctrine of Jesus Christ, their God. And when they do, they're going to win. Let's turn to Matthew in chapter 10. Verses 1 through 6. And when he had called him his twelve disciples, now Jesus called his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness. Jesus gave them the power. Now the names of the twelve apostles are so on. Now, Simon, now it says Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who were also betrayed him. This is a mistranslation here. The Hebrew reading reads Simon and the Canaanite Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot was a Canaanite, a Jew. A descendant of Cain. Simon and the Canaanite Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed Jesus, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. That was the word heathen. Go not into the way of the heathen, and into any city of the Samaritans enter you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus told his disciples, oh, Any minister who had read this would not preach to anybody but an Israelite. Jesus said, Go not but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he said who they were. And he said the Jews were not his sheep. Now, the reason we point that out is because in Matthew chapter 15, 21 through 24,